Hi, my name is Jesse Anderson. Today I'd like to explain why most data projects fail and what you can do to avoid it. And to do that, we're going to first talk about why do most projects fail? Why do, why do people think that they fail? And if you go on social media, most of the time they're talking about some sort of technology issue. They're saying, you chose Databricks or Snowflake or trying to ask which one's better. Or they're trying to figure out, should they do a data leg? Should they do whatever? Some kind of architectural question. Or sometimes they're talking about a programming language. We need to do Python. We have to do Java. We have to do Rust. Well, that's what people are saying. But what is the reality? What is really what they need? So to start off with, let's talk about why this is so important. So if you didn't know this, 85% of big data projects fail. They fail to make it into production. This is a number that came from Gartner. This also coincides with the, my experience on the matter, having uh, consulted extensively. So what happens is only 15% of projects actually succeed. That's, that's a rather sobering metric. So that means that the vast, vast majority of projects never go anywhere. Why is this so bad? This is when I first saw this, when I first saw this problem, I started to wonder why. I spent a lot of time researching this. So why do this? Well, technology is just one small part of this. And it's an important part, don't get me wrong, but the way people talk about it and the way people focus on it as if it's the only important part, that's the problem. It is one smaller part of lots of other problems. And if we don't focus on all those other problems, then we've just done the technology. I think our focus on the technology side comes from our ability to say, there, I did it. We put that program in place. We can say, I've put Spark in place. That's a pretty easy, pretty quantifiable thing. It's a very Boolean thing where it's either there or it's not. It's relatively easy to put in place. And then you can say, there, we've done that. We're ready to go. Instead of the much, much harder things of the organizational problems, these asking five questions. So what we really want to do is we want to avoid this by asking the right questions. So they're not technology questions, or they're not just technology questions. There are five questions, the who, what, when, where, and how. So let's start with the who. We need to have the right people. This is often one of those fundamental questions that people never think about. They need to be the right people. Uh, so you might be sitting there thinking, oh, I have a lot of data scientists. Well, the issue there is that the data scientists are just one of the groups of people that you need. They need, you actually need three different types of people to be successful. You will need data scientists, you will need data engineers, and you will need operations people. Each one of these people does a very specific part of making sure that you're doing the right thing, that you're able to operate, that you're able to be successful. More importantly, we need each one of those people in a best ratio. Sometimes the ratio at a company is zero data engineers, too many data scientists. That's a problem. That's that's the wrong way to go. So this, what this looks like is a lot of data scientists trying to do data engineering and they're really not good at it. And this shows in their productivity. Sometimes people will realize that a little bit and they'll have one data engineer trying to do the work of for 20 data scientists. Once again, not very good because we have this overworked data engineer who won't really be able to help the team. What's interesting is that the a ratio should actually be inverted, where there's far more data engineering than data science. So what we'd look for is a ratio of five to 10 data engineers per data scientist. We also have our operations team. We wanna make sure that we have sufficient operations team for what we're trying to do. Sometimes companies, especially C-level people, especially board level, they think of data teams as being transient. We, set up this team just for a little bit so that we can uh, go through this, so that we can create this project and be done. Now, the issue there is it presents a concept of this being, we just have this team for a little bit, that isn't the way it goes. And sometimes they'll ask another question of which one is most required for success? If I just have to choose one, well, they're all required. That's part of the problem. That's part of why we're not successful with our data projects. The next question we need to answer is what? What is the business value? So just saying we're going to do AI, 
That's not enough. We need to have a very specific, clear, actionable, clearly attainable plan to value creation. It is not just saying AI. It is going to be saying, we are going to use our data with this AI with this outcome. So just having a data strategy, sometimes companies will say at a board level, C level, here's our data strategy. We're going to acquire all the data about our customer. That still isn't a plan. That's more of a desire, but it's not actionable. We need to have thorough planning and execution on this. Our next question is when. When are you going to generate value? Sometimes companies will have this when it's ready sort of uh, timeline. So they'll say, okay, well, we don't know when it's going to be done. We may generate value in three years. We may generate value in five years. You don't want to do that. You want to be showing value as soon as you can. It may be minimal amounts of value, but we want to show value nonetheless. Other times we have the inversion of that. We have something where somebody has read something in Forbes or they've seen a conference talk and, and it may seem like this is all easy. So that board level person, that C level person thinks you can do all this in a day or a month. And that isn't the case. So these very infeasible timelines are really going to set you up for failure. So you want to avoid that. You want to have a clearer time frame of when you think you can generate that value. The reason for this is if we take too long to generate value, we're going to get our project canceled. And this is generally what happens. Our next question is where? So this is the technology part. It, technology is important, but it's not the only question as I talked about. So we need to have a clear plan. We need to have a clear architecture, a clear strategy. And if we don't have this clear strategy or this clear plan that we're going to do, the team isn't going to do it. Sometimes what teams will try to do is they'll try to shortcut this. They'll say, I don't know anything about this data. There's too many technologies out there. And so they'll look and they'll just follow a vendor's recommendation. Vendor says to do this, cloud provider says to do this, I'm just going to follow that. And that's often where companies get into uh, failure problems of, well, you didn't understand that architecture. There are some caveats to this. There are some problems to this. They're trying to do something different than you're trying to do. This is really where teams have problems on the architecture side, on the technology side, because they use the wrong tool for the job and don't really understand those trade-offs. Our next question is how. How are we going to execute this plan? So when we go to look at our, our team, how we execute that, what we want to do is we don't want to do 20 things all at once. What you ideally want to do is to do a few things well. Start off by doing one to three things, focus on those, execute well on those. And then if you do that, it, you're not going to go in all these different directions. What you're going to do is you're going to really focus on getting a few things done and that will promote your success. That will get you some velocity. And if you do those 20 things at once, you will never accomplish anything because it will take too long. Business priorities will change. Economics will change. What we're trying to do is do the highest and best thing for the organization while we can do that. So we don't want to get bogged down going in too many directions. Now, I want to give you one last question as a bonus, and that is why. Why is your data valuable? Eventually, you're probably going to be forced to answer the question, why are you doing this? You're costing a lot of money. I don't know if I want to, to keep on paying you, paying for all this cloud spend, paying for all these people. And eventually, you're going to have to come to an accounting person or somebody who's basically looking at the costs and saying, what is the value there? So this is where we, it's really key that you have established an ROI, a return on investment for your data spend. So generally what I look for is a 10X. So put a different way is if you're going to spend a million euros, pounds, dollars, whatever, that you will get 10 million back. And this is key because if we get pushback from an accounting person or somebody who's looking at some sort of bottom line, then you can say, well, sure, you can cut this, you can try to do this, but you're going to be living, leaving another 9 million on the table. And this is the sort of language that helps business people especially understand. They don't care about the technology. They don't care about that you have Snowflake. They don't care that you have Spark. They care about the ROI of this. And if you don't talk in those business terms, you'll be talking about two things you just don't care about. 
You care about the technology, they care about the money. You need to talk to them in the, in the words that they care about. So what you need to do is start by asking the questions, then answering them. As you think about this, you may be starting a team, go back, uh, make sure that you've answered those questions. And if you're already in a team, if you're already trying to execute and some of these things sound familiar, you need to go back, answer those questions, get a good answer for them because they may be the reason why you're having trouble executing right now. With that, I hope, wish you the best of luck in your data project and hope that you'll answer these questions so that you can find great success in your data projects.